Hey everybody, Pastor Warren here. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for continuing on the Bible in one year reading challenge. And I just wanted to let you know that if you feel like you're falling behind in some of the readings, that's okay. Uh, do what you can to stay with the day's current reading and keep moving forward. And maybe if you have time on the weekend, do some catch up there. But don't let the readings become a burden to you. And don't let the schedule of readings be so insurmountable to you that you feel like, oh, I can't keep up. Because I know life is busy. But take what you can and try and stay with the schedule as best you can and backfill on some readings as you fall behind if you can at a later time. But if you can't even do that, just keep moving forward. You're gonna be blessed by God's word no matter what you read. Um, this week I just wanted to share some insights with you on some themes that I picked up in our readings this week that you'll also be reading as well. The theme of deception continues uh, with between, it comes to a head between Jacob and Laban uh, over the deception that Laban gave to Jacob over the amount of years that he had to work for him. He worked for him a total of 20 years when initially he said that he only needed to work seven. All this comes to a boiling point, and even Rachel herself gets involved in that deception. So pay attention to how she jumps into that. Uh, act of deception as well. Another great theme that runs through our readings this week is that of reconciliation, especially when it comes to relationships. And I know many of us in our lives, all of our relationships aren't uh, what we intend them to be. And as you read, think of your own relationships and how you might reconcile with some people that you're struggling with. What I'm getting at is when Jacob and Esau came to a reconciliation point. Look at how they came together in an embrace. That is the same kind of embrace. The phrase is that Jacob fell on Esau's neck. It's a very tight, warm, uh, deep embrace of reconciliation. It's the same embrace that the prodigal son had with his father when he returned home. It is also the same embrace that's described when Joseph finally reconciles and reveals who he is to his brothers who had sold him off to Egypt to become a slave. The last one is uh, with regard to uh, perhaps a little money management. Uh, I'm here, just got done at Willow Creek with the Smart Money Tour with Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan. And you'll see how Joseph, when he rose to power uh, in the land of Egypt, he became second in command to Pharaoh himself. He talked about a dream that he had where the people were to save up for seven years in order to have enough food, supply, wealth for the next seven years that would come in famine. So Joseph did a great job of saving. In fact, they saved so much, the Bible said that they couldn't keep record of how much that they had saved from city to city to city for those next seven years. So we see a little bit of personal finance with regard to Joseph and what he did uh, to help his people that ultimately led his whole family to come back to Egypt and find the land of Goshen, which his people prospered in. So a lot to take away from this, this week's readings, and I hope you enjoy finding out these little intricate moments where you can dig into God's Word. Keep on reading, and I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.